Hi there. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about the Move, Copy and Rotate tools. I'll also introduce you to grouping objects and measuring them. Before I move on, let me point out that all of these tools and actions have one thing in common. An object or objects need to be selected before these actions can be taken. So the first thing that we'll cover is object selection. We're going to use the Select tool, the tool that looks like a black arrow. You'll find this at the top of the toolbar. Select it and the cursor changes to a black arrow. I'll use this to select different entities in my drawing. Click once to select one edge or face of an object. The selected entity will turn blue to indicate that it has been selected. If you click on a second entity, the first will be deselected. If you want to select more than one object, click and hold down the shift button as you select. Notice the small plus sign beside the cursor. Click in an empty area to deselect. Click twice on an edge to select it and the face is connected to it. Click twice on a face to select the face and the edges that constrain it. Click away to deselect. Triple click in quick succession to select an object and all the geometry connected to it. Click and hold the shift key to continue adding to your selection or to remove an entity from the selection. Click in an empty area to deselect all. Now let's look at the click and drag method of selection. Firstly, to select all the geometry in my drawing, I'm going to right click in an empty area and hold down my right mouse button. A selection rectangle appears. As I drag, the geometry that's enclosed by the selection rectangle is selected. Let go to complete the selection. However, there is more functionality available with this click and drag selection process. Let me show you. Click and drag from left to right. Notice that the selection rectangle is a continuous line. Only entities that are completely enclosed within this rectangle are selected. Let go the mouse button to complete the selection. In contrast, click and drag from right to left. This selection rectangle is shown as a dashed line. Anything touched by this selection rectangle will be selected. I'm going to use the click and drag to select to make sure that all edges of this cube are selected. Now that we have this object selected, let's take a look at the Move tool. You'll find this tool halfway down the toolbar. Click to activate it. The cursor changes to a four-headed arrow. I'm going to click once on this corner to begin to move this object. In SketchUp, the point on which you click for the first time becomes your move point. Notice how the cube is attached to the point where I clicked initially. Click a second time to relocate the object. The Move tool will remain active until you change the tool selection. So click on the Select arrow to deactivate the Move tool. Click away to deselect. Let's repeat the last few steps, but with a different move point and a little more accuracy. Triple click to select the entire cube. Activate the Move tool. I'm going to click this corner of the cube. I know that it's the corner when I see the green endpoint snap. I'm going to drag it so that it's adjacent to the middle cube. When I see the snap, I can click to finish the move. These cubes are now lined up side by side. Now I'd like to put the same distance between these two cubes as exists between these two. As I'm still in the move command, I can click on this point as my move point and this point as my second point. Now you may notice that the first and second cubes have fused together. This happens a lot in SketchUp and is the issue that most often confuses new users. To prevent this from happening, group an object or objects before you place them side by side. Let me undo the last few steps to revert to separate boxes. To undo, I'm going to click Ctrl Z if using a PC or Command Z on a Mac. Click and drag to select this cube. Now I'm going to right click and choose Make Group from the right click menu. Click away to deselect. Now when I click on any part of the group, all parts of the included geometry are selected rather than just one edge or face, like in this ungrouped cube. I'm now going to move this cube back so that it is adjacent to its neighbour. Activate the Move tool. Click to assign a move point. Click again to assign destination. With the Move tool still active, I'll move this cube this distance. Clicking here to assign a move point, and here to assign a finish point. The distance has been replicated here, and the geometry didn't fuse together. 
This box remains grouped. Operations such as the push-pull or split face won't work on a grouped object. If you want to edit the geometry of a group, there are two options. Firstly, double-click on the group to activate the Edit Group command. You'll know you're in this command when you see a bounding box, which will surround all the entities that go to form that group. Also, other geometry is greyed out. Edit the geometry as normal within this bounding box. When finished, change to the Select tool and click away in an empty part of the work area to leave the Group Edit mode. The second option is to select the group, right-click and choose Explode from the right-click menu. Exploding means to ungroup. The geometry reverts back to being made up of edges and faces. It's worth noting that you can have groups within a group. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to copy this cube to create some more objects for our next grouping. This will bring us on to the copy command. SketchUp doesn't have an icon for a copy command. Instead, simply use the Move tool with the Control or Command key pressed down. Triple click to select the cube. Select the Move tool. Click to select a move point then click and drag to begin moving the object as usual. At any point during the move command, I can tap the control key if using a PC or command key if using a Mac to create a copy of the object. Click a second time to select a destination point for the copied object. With this cube already selected, I'm going to repeat the process. Click and drag to initiate the move. Tap the control or the command key. Click a second time to assign a destination point. Back to making our groups. Using the click and drag option, I'm going to select and group these cubes. This first cube will be group 1. If I add the first and second cube together, this can be group 2. Finally, if I press Ctrl A or Command A on my keyboard, this will select all geometry in the drawing area. I can group these and I'll call this Group 3. Our original cube, or Group 1, is now contained within two other groups. It's part of Group 2 and it's part of Group 3. But what if I want to edit it? First of all, I can double-click on any part of Group 3 to initiate the Edit Group command. See a large bounding box surround all of the objects in Group 3. Now I need to double-click within this group to find group 2. I'll double click on this and now I can make edits to this group. Finally, I'm going to double click on our initial group, group 1, so that I can make changes to the original cube. You can see here outlined we have group 1, group 2 and group 3. I'm going to make changes to the first cube. When I finish making my changes, I'm going to click away in an empty part of the drawing area to finish the edit command for each group. This seems quite a simple example, but imagine a complex model that has to be edited. If all the geometry keeps sticking together, grouping becomes essential. I have a few more points to cover about the move and copy commands. I want to show you how to move or copy using a specific typed distance. I'm going to copy this cube. Before I do this, what distance should I leave between copies? I'd like to use the same distance as the depth of the cube. Let's use the Tape Measure tool to measure this distance. Select this from the toolbar. Looking for inference points on the object, click on one point, then click on a second point. The distance will be shown both at the cursor and in the measurements box at the bottom right of the screen. Back to copying this to an accurate distance. I'm going to select the box by triple clicking on any part of it. Oh, we're still grouped, so just let me explode these groups. Select the cube by triple clicking on any part of it. Then activate the Move tool. I'm now going to drag in the direction of the red axis. Remember, if you click your right arrow key, it constrains your movement to the red axis. During my Move command, I'm going to tap the Control key to activate the Copy command. I can let go of my Control or Command key and now type in 6000 and press Enter to move this box that distance. As I'm in a millimetres template, 
I know that this copy is 6,000 millimeters from the original move point. A note of caution when moving or copying. If you're not careful, your object can move in an indiscriminate direction rather than in the direction that you want to move it. Moving it by eye often causes unexpected results. From an isometric perspective, the object might appear to have moved in the correct direction, but when you rotate the view, you realize that the movement was not in the direction that you wanted. Before you move or copy an object, ensure that you see the appropriate dotted axis line that is there to guide you along a particular axis. No dotted line means that you are moving the object without a definite direction. It can help to change the view to suit the required axis. For example, if you want to move something up along the blue axis, change your view to a left or right view. When you try to move the object in this view, it's very easy to move it straight up or down. To move it left or right along the X or Y axis, try changing the view to a top view, therefore making it less likely that the object will move along the Z axis. Now I want to introduce you to the Rotate tool. Again, we need to begin the introduction to this tool by selecting an object to rotate. Then we'll activate the Rotate tool. A protractor shaped icon will appear with your cursor. This protractor changes color depending on which axis it represents. Move the cursor around your object and watch how the color changes as you hover over different surfaces. These are called the rotation planes. Before I set my rotation plane, I'm going to visualize how I want my object to rotate. For example, I want this cube to rotate around this axis. This is a vertical line, so I'll rotate it around the blue axis. I'm going to hover my mouse over the object until the blue protractor appears. I'll click once to assign this rotation plane. Secondly, I need to move my mouse a short distance away from the object and click to assign the axis of rotation. Now I can rotate the object. Hold down the mouse key and drag to rotate. If you keep the cursor close to the protractor, you can use the very useful 15 degree increments shown on the protractor. Alternately, you can simply type in a rotation angle. Clicking the control key as you rotate an object will create a copy of that object. A useful exercise is to rotate the same object but use different axes to do so and view how a different rotation plane will produce different results. Remember as always to alter your view to the best position to work with the geometry and tools chosen. In the next tutorial I will talk about drawing with guides and using the polygon, arc and freehand drawing tools. Thank you.